Hi everybody, today we're going to look at Bitmark, we're going to look at how they've been hacked, what's happening right now, and how they are able to convert this money and get it back into the real world without being traced. Also, we're going to consider whether Bitmark can actually refund the customers and sort this out. So, uh, let's get started. Firstly, let's have a look at Bitmark's website. As you can see, it's uh, well produced, they have uh, their comparison of currencies here and the gainers you know you can see how things are doing well or not so well lots of advertisements and you can see here they've got apps and also 24 7 su support they claim themselves to be secure which is very very ironic let's be honest nothing is secure if you use your seed phrases and uh, easy to use we can see that it has 9 million users 800 cryptocurrencies which is a considerable amount and it's been operating for five years so it's not a small business uh, if we look on their Twitter, we can see that it has 338.5k followers, which is quite considerable. Not as many as Binance, though, who has 6.4 million. So we're not looking at the biggest of the players, but we're looking at a considerable player in the cryptocurrency market. Now, what we can see here is confirmation on their end. We have identified a large-scale security breach, and we are now conducting a thorough security review, and we'll strive to maintain transparency. So how did this happen? Well, there's arguments that it could be an inside job. There's also arguments that somebody was able to get into the secure wallet that had these codes available because these codes have to be secured somewhere, right? So let's say you have a Bitcoin wallet, right? And you have your private keys. This is an example of a private key here. So basically, your wallet has a private key, okay? And if somebody has access to this private key, they find it in your diary or they find it um, in a file that you've saved or an email you've sent to yourself, okay? If I put this private key in any wallet that is on the Ethereum chain, any wallet that recognizes Ethereum, and you've got Ethereum in your wallet that is connected to this private key, then I can immediately access that Ethereum, okay? There's also the 12 word seed phrases that can do the same thing. So somehow this, this key got leaked. All right. Now, it could have been an inside job, as some people are speculating, or it could have been um, hackers getting access to original files first or, or company files first, downloading the entire network and then going through them piece by piece, trying to identify where the private keys are. Regardless, someone got access to this private key and then all they do is simply put that private key in online and bang, they instantly have access to that wallet where they can start taking money out. Now, so here is the list of coins according to Peck Shield, And what has happened is there was a, a really large amount of Ethereum stolen, a huge amount, uh, 200 million, 100 million in Ethereum. But a lot of it was actually on the Binance Smart Chain. Look at all these coins. Oh my days, it's also around $5 a safe moon. <laughs> safe moon is such a cheap asset. I think I bought uh, 7 million for $12. Uh, so don't let these numbers fool you here. But as you know, like a lot of keys must have been given to get access to all of these. Or maybe it's just one key that had all of these coins on that individual wallet. Okay, on this hot wallet so the hacker will be certainly taking their time to make sure they convert all of these coins back to something usable maybe it's usd or usdt or bnb and then converting that to something else now the great thing about ethereum is we can look on something called etherscan and identify what the hacker is doing with that wallet and what fascinates me is the bitmark hacker has actually put his name here <laughs> and because Ethereum is decentralized. There isn't a centralized police body that can go, hey, you can't do this transaction. We're banning this transaction. That's not how cryptocurrency works. It cannot be blocked by governments, right? So what we're seeing here in real time is what the hacker is doing with that money. Now, they're being smart. That's what they're doing. So let's have a look at some of their transactions. At the moment, they still have 465,000 in their, in their wallet, okay? And that's 110 Ethereum. What they're doing is they're transferring out little bits of money at a time, but you can see it's 100 Ether at a time. And look where this 100 Ether is going to. It's going to something called Tornado Cash. Let me explain what Tornado Cash is. Tornado Cash has been developed by people that care about anonymity. So you can send your cryptocurrency to, to Tornado Cash, another person can do it, and it will mix them together, and it will send them out in different wallets that you can have access to. And what the developers did is they deleted their admin keys so they can no longer admit. So the developers deleted their admin keys so they can no longer access this themselves and have control over it. So now the code runs itself. 
which is really, really interesting. The code runs itself. Look, self-executing code. So now this is where it gets more interesting. So on this website here, they have over 2 million F deposited, all these unique users, all these deposits that are being jumbled up together and then distributed into different wallets. Now, this is really good for uh, anonymity. However, if people don't use um, IP blockers, if people don't use a strong VPN, then it, they can still be traced, okay? And there is an argument that this Ethereum can still be traced. So now what the hackers need to do after they have changed their Ethereum is they need to up their game a little bit. So what they can do now, and this is crazy because this coincides with Monero. Monero has something new called Atomic Swaps, okay? It happened with Bitcoin a few months ago, and now it happens with Ethereum. So what these hackers can do with their Ethereum is they can use an atomic swap, which is just basically a swap of Ethereum to Monero, the privacy coin, and they can do that without KYC, which means you don't need any identification, you don't need any form of platform exchange. So now what these hackers can do is they take their Ethereum, their jumbled Ethereum, which is already a little bit hard to trace, okay, in new wallets, and then they convert directly to Monero via Atomic Swap. So now they have all this Monero. The amazing thing about Monero is the technology is so advanced, the government is trying to stop it, all right? They've offered $700,000 as a reward, around $700,000 as a reward to get people to hack Monero. That's how important it is to governments. So the first thing is it uses ring signatures. So a lot of people compete transactions at the same time and it jumbles up these, uh, these signatures of these transactions. So you don't know who's making the transaction. Next, you don't know how much Monero is stored on each wallet. It is fungible. It is like a pound coin and another pound coin. You can't identify the difference between them. There's no special markings on them. It also masks transactions between coins. So basically it is very, very, it is a very superior technology for hiding transactions, for buying things online and being untraceable. So now if these people, if these hackers use the Monero to Ethereum bridge, okay, this atomic swap here, they can convert this money without anybody being responsible for it, the code runs itself, okay? Then what they can do with all this Monero is they can use an atomic bridge to convert it back to Bitcoin. And then they might have clean Bitcoins. The thing is, if you are using this bridge, right, and you have Bitcoins, it might be another illegal entity using these Bitcoins to convert to Monero, and you're converting your Monero back to illegal Bitcoins. So, you know, you could be picking up some illegal stuff. So that leads to the final factor then. What you need is a mule. You need somebody that's a bit down on their look, that's not doing well financially, and you say to them, okay, I'll give you $50 a month if you just give me your credit card details. And then what you can do is you can funnel small amounts of cash to these people and get them to take the money out for you, and they get a little bit of a cut of the difference. So you're actually defending and protecting yourself in another way there by using other entities rather than your own name and your own KYC because when you take money out, ultimately there is some identification needed when you convert back to fiat currency. Or if you've got friends in the business, you can give send them the Bitcoin and then they can send you the cash. But you know, it's the final stage can be a bit difficult, or it can be kept in the wallet and used to purchase things. You know, or it can be kept as Monero for a long time and like consistently wallet addresses change. There's lots of things and there's lots of ways to get out of this. So let me break it down in a quick list. So what's happening is they get a private key for the F wallet. So they access that wallet. Then they send this Ethereum to a mixer, okay? And it puts F in a new wallet and it mixes it with other Ethereum. So to avoid being traced more, they need a VPN for that. Next, they use atomic swaps. So they don't use a centralized agency and they send their Ethereum and make it into Monero. Now Monero is completely anonymous. They change the wallet addresses. They mix that around a little bit. Next, they use atomic swaps to swap this back to BTC. So they've got potentially clean Bitcoins, potentially dirty Bitcoins, hard to say, but they didn't have a Bitcoins in the first place, so it's completely different. Then they put that clean BTC, they can exchange it if they want to on exchanges, which could be a bit risky, or they, they have to find a way to change this Bitcoin on a platform in exchange for cash, right? And they might wanna disperse that into smaller amounts of money. So to be super safe, then they could use a mule um, or multiple mules to, to get that money out. And then seven, profit. So the ultimate question is really, 
can Bitmart uh, promise that they will refund the difference of what's happened and, and the money that's been taken from their customers? And the answer is probably yes. It's a small fraction in comparison to what they actually have stored in cold storage. And they're probably going to increase their security from now on. Even though on their Twitter, they claim to be the most trusted crypto trading platform. They have to put their money where their mouth is now and prove it. They have to be responsible, step up their security and offer refunds to everybody that's lost money. So that's what I'm hoping for today. I understand that transactions have been banned for a temporary period of time. And I hope everybody's money remains safe. And I hope everybody gets refunded the money that they have lost. Okay, that's it for me. I hope everybody has a good day. Bye bye.